Um, it's an open discussion about various topics. Uh, today's topic is going to be about securing generative AI. Uh, for starters, we have callers from all around the globe. Uh, I'm going to kindly ask that you guys, uh, just in the chat area, if you can let us know where you're from, uh, that'd be great. That's a great start. Uh, and also, what I'd like to do is get a show of hands for anyone who is actually building any apps using AI. I think that would also be very helpful. So um, if you can write in the chat box where you're from and also show a hand uh, if you're building an app using AI, okay? So um, today's call uh, features how to secure, well, before I get there, um, as I was saying earlier, this is our second community cafe. Again, it is about the community. Um, we welcome questions. We've got members here uh, who will be looking out for those questions. Uh, we're gonna basically kick it off with, I've got a couple of factoids I wanna share, but we're gonna kick it off with guest intros Then we're gonna run right into the actual uh, demo of the app. And then we'll follow it up with Q and A. We'll have plenty of time for Q and A, uh, give everybody an opportunity to get their answers questioned. Uh, our, questions answered. I'm sorry. Um, but good. So please uh, share away. Uh, today's call, you know, features how to secure generative AI with a few of Pangea's security services. Uh, before introducing uh, the speakers, just want to share a couple of factoids I learned about. Uh, we all know that some form of AI products have been built starting in the early 2000 teens using AI or AI products, I should say. Uh, with neural networks, we've seen apps using AI being built starting in 2015, maybe even earlier. Uh, this growth is only a small fraction compared to what we've seen in the last year with generative AI. Uh, in 2023 alone, can you, anyone give me a guess on how many projects, new projects are starting per week? Anybody want to take a, a stab at that one? No? All right. Well, 50? go ahead. 50. 50. Okay. Any other numbers? Uh, the chat says 500. 500. It says dozens. Okay. Well, based on what I'm hearing, it's 250. We're at a rate of 250 new projects per week. Um, and basically anticipating uh, close to, guess how many projects that will have opened up or popped up in the year of 2023, by the end of the year? A uh, hundred thousand. <laughs> That's a lot. Out of that. <laughs> That's a lot. Uh, my numbers show 11,000. Um, the source I was using is there's, it's, uh, it's actually called, there's something there for, what is it? Um, there's an AI for that. And so it's basically an AI aggregator. So uh, anyways, just wanted to share a few of those before we uh, kind of start with the guests. So um, with that, uh, I'd like to introduce our two guests, uh, Vanessa Villa, Devrel with Pengea. Uh We've got Michael Combs, uh, who's our other guest, uh, principal engineer here at Pangea as well. Um, so let me go ahead and uh, start with this. Um, so Vanessa, you want to say hello? How are you doing today? Pretty good, pretty good. Uh, hi, I'm Vanessa Villa. I'm a developer advocate here at Pangea. Uh, been here for, I think, almost six months. So I'm almost the resident expert in the uh, dev nice. space. Um, Vanessa, where, where are you based? Oh, uh, Bellevue, Washington. So it's pretty close to Seattle. We're about five minutes across the water from Seattle. Nice, nice. Is that where you grew up as well? Oh, no. I am originally from Southern California, so this uh, was definitely California. a change. Yeah, especially weather-wise, right? So. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Michael, I, I know you're you're based here in Palo Alto. Are you uh, also from the Bay Area, or where are you from? I'm from Salinas, California, which oh, okay. is about an hour south. Got a Bay Area native. All right. Oh, that no, no, it's not Bay Area. I think <laughs> Bay Area people would, would actually get mad if you called that Bay Area. Is that right? Okay. It is pretty far out of the Bay Area. <laughs> it is very far. I'm from San Francisco originally. It's known as Bay Area. Sorry, Michael. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think uh, when you go to Monterey, you don't need to go through Salinas. So, um, well, good. Um, Vanessa, you know, you've 
you just mentioned you had been here for five months. Where, where were you working before? Um, I was kind of a dev advocate, kind of more of a product manager over at um, Azure IoT, so Microsoft Azure IoT. Big company, great. Yeah. yeah. Uh, big, big change coming to Pangea, right? So, definitely, definitely. Yeah. Uh, were you, uh, Michael, were you also in a bigger company prior or? Yeah, uh, I was at Cisco and um, from there I went to Splunk. Nice. So big company guy. Well, now I'm working at a startup. How long have you been here at Pangea? I was employee number 15, I think. So I a little was, over a year. It was 15. Uh, just give it your hard time. Yeah, no. Okay. It's been a while. What? Almost a year now, over a year. Good. Um, you know, again, Vanessa, I know you had mentioned you're, you're now DevRel, uh, but I also know you love coding. You've been coding. Um, you know, want to ask you, you know, what, what got you into coding and, and how long have you been coding? Oh, that's a really fun question. Um, so I was originally going to be a math major. I really loved math. Um, and I did a math internship in high school. Okay. During that math internship, it was required to learn Python in order to run all of these math experiments. Okay. And so we were running math experiments using Python, and that was my first uh, foray into coding. I was like, I like the coding part a lot more than the theoretical math, so I'm going to go see what I can do with that. Oh, wow. Okay, good. Are you? Do you find yourself still finding time to uh, do some coding now in, in your role today? Yes, definitely. Oh, good. Good, good, good. Michael, I, I know that you're an enthusiast in generative AI. I definitely know you're coding. So uh, just wanted to ask you, you know, what, is there a specific tool or platform that you prefer? Uh, prefer? Well, Pangea, of course, from security. And I'm helping <laughs> build it. But my favorite tool right now is something called Llama2, which is just a, an AI model. But there's a bunch of infrastructure around it so you can host your own model. I think that's going to be key to the future of security. Good, good, good. Uh, well, that that kind of starts bringing us here to uh, the main topic, right, of uh, as we kind of get into generative AI, right? So, um, but before I get there, and I know the callers are curious, um, Vanessa, you know, what would you say is your proudest moment? Um, with respect to career-wise, programming-wise, is there a specific? <laughs> you know what? It could be in general, right? I mean, gosh, it could be catching that fish for the first time. I don't know. <laughs> it's uh, it's your cult. Um, I think so. Once upon a time, I was a developer on a virtual reality platform, and I think fully writing my own virtual reality communications platform. Um, that was, I think my, my proudest moment. Cause it was just me, one designer and one PM. It was a small team and it took us about a year and three months. Um, and that was, I think probably my proudest moment for sure. Nice. Nice. I appreciate you sharing that. Michael, you, uh, want to step up and share your, your proudest moment there? Oof. <laughs> That's always a hard question. Um, recently we turned out a pretty big feature that took a little while on our end. It took a lot of expertise in a couple of different platforms. So that, um, that's kind of what comes to mind for me. Fantastic. Well, I would say that my proudest moment is that we've gotten this episode two <laughs> and we are, we've got a great crowd today. So, uh, I hope you're enjoying it so far. So. Uh, without further ado, uh, it is what everyone has joined the call for, and that is the sample app to walk us through how to secure generative AI. So let me stop sharing here, and uh, Vanessa, if you want to take over, that would be fantastic. Sure. I think you need to enable it for participants. Oh, oh okay. One second here. Um, there we go. All righty. I have the secure chat GPT with Vault pulled up over here. This is the code base uh, to the left and the app that's currently running on the right. Um, so basically what we've done is that we took the API that calls OpenAI um, and 
it delivers the prompts to that model and all of that. And we wrapped it. We made a little app wrapper so that your inputs get parsed through a couple of security checks before it hits that API. So first off, using the Pangeo services, we have to sign in using uh, Pangea's auth end service. That way not anyone can access this model. This is just, you know, a little secured nugget here. So let me go in head and log in real quick. And it does have multi-factor authentication enabled, which, you know, if you're being secure is great <laughs> for demos. Takes just one extra second. All right, we're logged in. We made it in, cool. On the left-hand side of this app, you can see that there's audit enabled, redact is enabled, and threat analysis is enabled. So let's go ahead and check out to see what happens. So it says audit is enabled. And what does that mean? So audit means that all of the prompts will be put into our audit log, and redact means that any private information or sensitive information will be redacted. I wanted to show you what redaction rules are enabled. So let me pull that over. Here we go. So this is the Pangea console. Um, you may have seen us talk about it before in other community cafes. <laughs> um, so this is basically, you can come in here, go to the redaction section and see what rule sets are enabled. So I just kind of wanted to make sure that to check basically what rules we have enabled. It looks like IP address currently gets uh, redacted date times. We can also put a redaction on URLs. Uh, let's see what PIIs are redacted. Email addresses. Uh, let's also redact locations just for fun. So if we go back to the, oh my gosh, the, these controls, sorry. If we go back to the actual prompt here, if I say, hello, I'm from Bellevue, Washington. It gets redacted as location comma location. When it returns from OpenAI, it says, is a beautiful place with lots of interesting things. I love visiting the local place. So it kind of, the, the AI model reacts to that redaction in kind of an interesting way, right? That's kind of interesting. The other neat thing is that you see this check mark here. It means that this is a signed response from OpenAI. We have signed and verified that this response is from OpenAI. There's been no tampering on that response. Um, is there any questions? Does anybody want to play around with it? Do we want to make sure that, you know, things were actually audit logged? <laughs> I like that it reacted sarcastically. I like that it reacted sarcastically too, but I've been treating it rather sarcastically recently. <laughs> yeah, I haven't, uh, you know, we've got one question uh, from one of the, from Keith, one of the callers. Um, let me just share here. Uh, does Redact catch credit card numbers, email addresses, phone numbers? Let's try a phone number. Is that true? Because the only credit card number I can think of is mine off the top of my head. And <laughs> yeah, uh, it's, uh, yeah, there are either put in, or... you could put in a fake uh, social or yeah, the five 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 one two three four three four. Yeah, yeah, it does redact a phone number, and then okay. oddly enough, it responds with a phone number. And I'm not sure if this is a phone number that has been fed into the system or if it's like their company phone number. What What are this the the instances or use cases where you would use uh, securing, you know, generative AI. I mean, obviously, uh, you know, maybe I'm thinking about with Redact, there's multiple things we can redact, right? And how does that apply to AI apps? Okay, so um, there are a couple of different areas where you want to secure the data that's going out of your out of your um, boundaries, so like you might have a network boundary, and you might have some sensitive information. You don't want to leave that boundary. So making a call to something like ChatGPT um, before the call goes to ChatGPT should be secured. But there's also um, 
when you're training a model, the data that's coming in, sometimes you want to make sure that there's no malicious data, especially if you're grabbing or scraping open source information. So those two are key areas. Yeah, that was good. Um, I know one instance we were talking about is just uh, employees within companies that might be uploading resumes uh, to, you know, just, again, just haphazardly uh, uploading information. And so, uh, again, another classic example of where redaction uh, could be helpful, right? So. Uh, could I add? Um, yeah, so, so prompt injection attacks are, are pretty big, uh, and they're basically where you make a prompt do something that it wasn't you know trained to do. Uh, and the way you do that is by putting in data that was unintended. So this is not just for, you know, for like corporate uses of chat GPT. It's also for people that are building apps uh, to solve, you know, various different purposes. Uh, this thing, this feature is actually called input data redaction, where you redact unwanted data that goes into your input and it's protecting your prompt from giving responses that weren't intended. Correct. Right. Yeah. Might. Thank you for now. Someone put in a couple of more information into the... Um, so it looks from like from the chat. Sorry, I just pulled up the chat. It looks like someone oh, yeah. does want to try. <laughs> we do have a credit card number here. Yeah, there's a there is a credit card number. Apparently, it's mine. <laughs> Apparently, it's yours. There's Keith's phone number. We got you know a couple people who want I mean, to try I mean, it out. I'll give you that. I, I Stripe has like a best credit card number. Cool. You can try that. Awesome. No, this is that'll be a credit card. It's not in. <laughs> You can also use the LifeLock CEO's social security number to test the SSN. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Come on, a truck repair. <laughs> Bruce, where did you pull that one from? From Google. It really is. Really? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's interesting. So they must have used it and it must have got a gotten captured by the model kind of proving the point of like don't feed it information that you don't want it to spit out yep there you go uh, it does indeed redact credit cards i just had to go in make sure that in the redaction rule sets it was indeed enabled um but if we wanted to mask it or do a partial mask or have only detection those are also uh configurable so if you did have a private model for your company if you're using this in a particular way um you can configure it to your specific needs I'm not sure if we answered uh did, pranav was in in your response earlier was that responding to can uh, no no it wasn't so i just i just responded but there there are tons of prompt ejection attacks um that are you know they're, they're, there's twitter is full of them and and there are people discovering them every day um but but Using Pangea's Redact API protects you against a lot of them because you're preventing users from putting in stuff that you definitely don't want that could cause a prompt injection attack. So, so it's it's definitely a one step to to preventing a bunch of prompt injection attacks. Nice. Cool. All right. If there's any other questions on the app, anybody else want to put in? and try it out and <laughs> put in anything. Hey, Michael, you mentioned uh, DevNet, Cisco. You're, are you referring to uh, Verlaine is on the call? Yeah. Okay, got it. Nice. Um, I, I don't see any other questions coming through. Uh, cool. Is it fair to say that, I mean, are, is anyone building any AI, I mean, apps using AI? Or I know that, you know, there's a ton of them popping up every week. Uh, anyone here? You know. All right. Um, well, good. Let's see. A couple of weekend hacks that I do sometimes. Um, uh, one of them I'm bu building is uh, there's this guy that uh, roasts people on YouTube for their financial situations. Mm. So um, over the weekend, I'm building this thing which connects to your bank accounts, looks at your spending, and basically will be like a like an AI bot that responds like him to roast you about your financials. Okay, that's uh, you do that. Uh, uh, his name is Caleb Hammer. <laughs> that guy gets legit mad at people. 
Yeah. It's a long long way to go for a joke. I, I strongly approve. If you get text <laughs> if you get text to voice working with that, that would be really funny too. There's a yeah. website called Play HT that you can use to either use your own voice or use recordings of somebody to create the whole effect. Yeah, I actually did that. I built something called Karen AI a couple of months back, which was basically <laughs> meant to respond like a Karen for a particular issue. And I, I basically trained a voice model uh, to clone um, Karen voices that I scraped from YouTube and TikTok. And <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll share the, the Twitter. Right, right. <laughs> so, good. Being creative for sure. Um, well, good. I mean, we, we are you know, well within time here. Uh, so uh, promote, Warlene had a question about what type of information can't be protected with generated Act. Is the service limitless? Okay. Um, I think I can uh, respond to that by saying it comes with, the Red Act service out of the box comes with a lot of different rules of various different categories. And Vanessa can probably just show what the rule categories are. Yep. But um, y y you can create your own rules um, in the system because there are going to be things which are not, uh, you know, a format that we can provide a redaction rule for something like an employee ID, which could be different for every different organization. Um, you can create your own rules, rules, and um, you know, check them out. There are good amount, good capabilities when creating your own rules, like adding context values, which will help you increase the confidence of the detection, and then accordingly, you can um, you know decide. Uh, whether you want to redact, mask, partial mask, or whatever you want to do um, uh, uh, for the information that has been detected. So, yeah, it is it is kind of limitless. Great. You know, I noticed. Uh, no, that's good. Um, any any additional comments for with what uh, Sarab just shared? Zip codes is a hard one, Kate. Zip codes. Keith was asking, are zip codes covered? It's a good question. Um, I, yeah. I am. Um, which means I don't have a good answer. <laughs> it's, yeah. Well, as everyone knows here, we've also launched our Securathon uh, uh, last week. We're now uh, finishing, wrapping up week two um, with a focus in health and wellness. So, our health and wealth. Um, I know that we've got a few people from our secure that are on the call. Um, are there any questions that you would like to ask the team here while we're here? Um, it's a great opportunity to get some clarity um, on anything you're working on. Or you can add it to the uh, the chat box here. Okay. So, well, good. This is great. Uh, I mean, wow, this is quick. Uh, I, you know, I'm just, uh, one, one of the things I wanted to ask or share is again, thank you all, uh, Vanessa, what a great, um, demo really appreciate it. Uh, Michael, you know, again, I know you're, you know, definitely enthusiast in generative AI. I mean, we had talked about that over the, when we were talking earlier this week. Um, have you, have you thought about working on anything, uh, in this space? Absolutely. Uh, it's kind of, um, the most popular thing to work on right now, I have to say. But personally, I've been looking at security applications for it and uh, potentially using company internal documents as training data to be able to manage a lot of like day-to-day -day things. Nice, nice. I had one question about the app well, with the check mark about you know using the audit log. Does the check mark mean that it validates what it's printing to the screen actually matches what was logged as far as the response goes? It matches that it, it was untampered with. It's an untampered with response from OpenAI. So basically it's saying that like this is from OpenAI. It hasn't been attacked somewhere in route to uh, getting to your web page. Like this is the actual verified response from OpenAI because... Uh, well, there's a lot of really complicated phishing and scam attacks going on right now. Like I know I was like chatting with a chat bot the other day on a website and it was actually not a part of the website. It was just like an element on there. So um, it's it's no man in the middle attack, basically. What did you say that was? No man in the middle attack? Mm -hmm. Is that right? Okay. The first time you're hearing that. Uh, do you want to explain what a man in the middle 
Sure. <laughs> sure. Well, it's like the game. It's like the game that you used to play in grade school, right? So it's like if you have two people throwing a ball and, you know, someone in the middle just kind of jumps up and catches the ball and like Got it. messes with it, right? Before it gets to you, that's a that's a man in the middle attack. I had a question. Um, so, so how how long did this kind of take you to build to integrate the Redact APIs into with your? Uh, it only took about an hour, and uh, the UI is actually what took the longest. Everything on the back end was pretty fast. Uh, Pangea offers a bunch of SDKs in different languages, and I would say that they're pretty easy to use. So, did you use the SDKs for this? Uh, implement it. Uh, yeah. Um, cool. Yeah, I, I did this a couple of months ago, so um, remembering the actual lines is a little difficult. Um, you know, you don't remember specific pages on a book all the time, but yeah, I, I do remember using this in case. Well, thanks for writing the app, uh, Michael. You know, we shared it with a lot of folks. Um, I, I, it's actually, it has more features now than when I wrote it, so I think somebody else um, worked on it as well. I'm not sure who that is. <laughs> it's, uh, good. Well, hey, so, you know, we've asked for a few rounds of questions. Uh, we're not saying anything here. I, you know, you know, if we want to give some time back, you know, again, want to thank everybody um, before we, but actually a couple of, I'm sorry, a couple of things before we go, I just want to, you know, we've, again, if, if some of you may have joined us who are not part of our community, we welcome you to join our community. Uh, here's a QR code uh, that will take you to our Pangea Lab, Pangea community page. Uh, where you can join our Slack channel. So please, we welcome you. Um, it's an opportunity to collaborate. Uh, if for any reason you're building your app and need some help with securing it, we're here to help you as well. Um, and then secondly, uh, for those of you who are starting a new program or a new new app, um, we do have a startup program that we'd love to share with you, okay? So again, enough of the, uh, the PSA plug. And yeah, thank you so much. Thanks, everybody. Uh, for the time and uh, stay tuned for next week's uh, topic. Okay. So I think where Lane has a question. Oh, that. Lane does have a question. Oh, fantastic. Oh, here we go. So as soon as gender AI becomes popular, now we have some tools such as Worm GPT to attack companies anywhere on the globe. How do you protect Pangea before securing the continents? I feel like a game show host when I just ask that question. <laughs> uh, Anyone here who would want to um, pitch in on this one? Um, we're thinking Michael. Uh, for the Redact service specifically, um, we have our own in-house model that we, we're managing. So it, we're not using external data or services for it. Nice. Yeah, but I mean, uh, that being said, I think we have a bunch of other cool services like IP Intel APIs, URL Intel APIs that can definitely be used um, to block certain attacks. Obviously, not all attacks. So, yeah, it depends on what attack, what the threat model is. Great. Great. Well, I will. Um, I'll wrap this up, and thank you, everybody.